Amid the sell-down compounded by banking troubles overseas, experts say Chinese stocks still look attractive. Still, it won't be entirely smooth sailing. Chinese households have pulled back on spending, which has curtailed growth in retail and property sales. We have to get evidence you know, from data to prove that the economic recovery is underway. And that, that way, you know, then you know, we can have a more sustained uh, uh, rally going forward. Consumption is within expectation. Uh, the government is still spending. Uh, so it's really up to the property sector to rescue the Chinese economy again. The property sector accounts for a quarter of China's economy. And while government support has helped narrow the decline in property sales and investments this year, prospects remain cloudy. People are still shying away from investing big sums of money in long-term investments, which is why I think the real estate sector, especially developers, are going to be a little rocky. So I'm quite bullish over the A-share market over the next three to five years because Chinese need to invest their money somewhere. It's not going to be real estate. It's going to be into the A-share market. In the ongoing market downturn, both the Shanghai and Shenzhen exchanges, where A shares are traded, remain up year to date. In comparison, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index has given back most of the year's gains and is up just slightly over 1%. Experts say now may be a good time for investors to take stock in consumer plays. It's certainly not going to be a V-shaped recovery. I think investors need to find the right sectors um, and put money in, which will do very well, such as um, looking at Young China or BYD, uh, the auto company, or in companies like Heidi Lau Hot Pot. In a high inflation environment, coffee chains like Luckin Coffee and Manor Coffee have room to grow, while internet stocks like Tencent and Pintuo will likely be driven by bigger market share overseas, says China Market Research Group. While some investors may have concerns about investing in state-owned firms, experts say policy support makes them attractive bets. Uh, China Telecom, China Mobile, Petro China, Sandokan, many of these names with the word China or national in their names, in their company names, are doing very, very well. Uh, the, uh, uh, many of these names are, are more than double by now, uh, and, and they're still going very strong. And even after this rally, they're still trading at about 10 times. Price to earnings variation in the multiple is way below the market uh, average. I still think the tech sector is very important to China. It's very important to the future. They're very good at it. And that's the kind of area that you should be looking at, for instance, in renewable devices, you know, like windmills, um, solar panels, those kind of things, a lot of technology, and also battery technology. Opportunities aside, there are things to keep in mind when investing in Chinese equities. They do come with better expected returns and also better expected growth. However, on the flip side of the coin is that they do come with a higher than expected uh, risk as well, especially when we are invested in new economies that have higher regulatory risk given that they are actually growing uh, rapidly. Valuation is cheap, uh, very, very cheap. Uh, but so what, you know, it's cheap for a reason, right? You know, because economic recovery is not certain just yet. For now, Chinese markets will not be spared from global economic headwinds. I think uh, the key overhang for Chinese equities will probably come from the external environment currently that is actually slowing down. And I think in the second half, we can potentially see a slower GDP growth for China given the exports will probably be affected by the external environment. The biggest risk right now, frankly, is not China, not China's economy, not China's government, but actually the Americans. There's a feeling in China right now that the Biden regime is trying to contain China's growth. And that's a real political risk because a lot of American companies are saying, you know what, in 2023, we don't want to invest in China. We're worried about getting sanctioned, not by China, but by the Americans. For investors looking to diversify their portfolios with Chinese stocks, they can either look at Hong Kong or mainland listed shares or US listed American Depository Receipts or ADRs.
There are wonderful undervalued companies in China that investors need to be looking into. Um, you just have to make sure that you can, you have an appetite for risk and you have to make sure that you are willing to do the proper due diligence because there is a lot of fraud and the, you know, the economic and political winds change so fast here. With most investors, they're going to either be exposed to Chinese equities or they're not. The advantage China has is that the market hasn't recovered hugely from some of its lows previously, so it probably is going to retain an element of safety uh, and safe haven in a world that at the moment looks quite uncertain.